Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football with the transfer portal winding down. You're starting to get a better feel of what this USC program is looking like heading into spring camp, fall camp, and then the 2024 season. The boys want to start taking some deep dives into the position groups for this USC team heading into the 2024 year in Monday. We're starting with the offensive line. Next Monday, we're taking a look at the defensive line and so on. We're really excited to get into this. Before we do, just want to say one, thank you to you guys and a shout out to the USC fans. This has been a program that we talk about a ton. The amount of support you guys have shown, it really does mean a lot. So if you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And more importantly, I mean, the best part about doing this is hearing from you guys, talking ball with you guys in the comment section. We learn a ton from you guys, so would love to hear your feedback in the comment section. Dill, I'm going to give you the tee box here. This USC offensive line heading into 2024, how we feel? I mean, honestly, if they get that right side right, I think they look pretty good because you look at that left side with Pregnant and, and Monheim, that was a really, really good unit. I thought those two for the most part, played really well. Pregnant maybe a little inconsistent, but you, you can tell he's going to be a good player. That right side, though, is really weak, I thought. I thought constantly giving up a lot of pressure and just really kind of dragging that unit down. So to me, it's like, can they get some of these young guys in Page, Alani, Noah, some of these younger guys to come in and fix that side? I think if they do that, I think this unit looks pretty good. Yeah, my, my take on watching some of the USC games back, looking at some of the numbers – was it, the the consistency wasn't really there. Like you never really saw five offensive linemen playing really good football for multiple games straight, right? And you saw some flashes of this group playing really well, but again, the consistency kind of lacked. Two things that I'm really excited about for USC in 2024. One is the fact that Lincoln Riley and the staff didn't really go into the transfer portal to address this offensive line. And what does that tell you? They didn't, it wasn't like they were missing on targets. They just didn't think they needed to address this offensive line in the portal, right? And you can tell a lot about a, how a coach feels about a position group in terms of how are they addressing the transfer portal, right? You look at that USC secondary, we're going to be breaking down that position as well. They felt like they needed to completely revamp that group. They didn't have the personnel. They didn't have the talent. So they go out to the portal and get extremely aggressive. For USC on the offensive line, I don't even know if they hosted – a transfer portal prospect on the offensive line all portal cycle. So what does that tell you for Lincoln Riley? Say, hey, we like some of the guys that we have coming in, and we think this group can be pretty good from what we have in our facilities right now heading into 2024. The next thing I want to talk about, and you said it best, like the young talent. Like you're going to lose guys like Tarquin, Dedich, Kingston, guys that – I don't think played that great in 2023 and you're replacing him with guys like Alani Noah and Elijah page, potentially Jason Zandamella, who we'll talk about. So from a USC offensive line in 2024, kind of preview checking under the hood, I feel like you feel pretty good about the young talent that's coming into this group heading into the next season. And one thing I think I'm looking for, for a little bit, just on a general scheme thing, as you bring in some new younger guys is simplify this offense a little bit, especially that run scheme. I mean, you kind of think back to what they were doing, and I get why they – I think I get why they were doing it. It probably had something to do with wanting Caleb involved in pretty much every play, whether that was an RPO, whether that was his own read, whether that was a design quarterback run. I just felt like it was really complicated. They were pulling tight ends around. They were trying to do misdirection, and I think that created a lot of negative plays. And when you get too many negative plays, it's hard to sustain a good running attack. I felt like – when they were running their base zone scheme, which I thought was, I mean, especially on the left side, I thought those guys were really good at it. I thought Pregnant, especially, that's when he was at his best. I thought they, I mean, they ran the ball pretty effectively when they were doing that. But again, I think without Caleb Williams and as they go in for the Miller Moss era, I think you get into a less quarterback centric offense in more of just a, Again, all, all 11 doing their job. I of. completely agree with that. And I think it's hard to, like Lincoln Riley's an offensive genius and he had Caleb Williams and he had so much talent on that USC offense. At times it felt like they were just trying to do too much. And Caleb Williams especially, like one of the knocks that we had, and there's not much to knock about Caleb Williams, was a little bit too much um, kind of not playing within the offense. And I think heading into 2024 with Miller Moss as your quarterback, you're going to see this USC offense Go back to, yeah, we're going to scheme, right? Lincoln Riley is a phenomenal schemer of an offense. 
but it's going to be a little bit more simple. And we're going to stick to that run game. I'm most excited about the balance that you're going to see. I mean, with Caleb Williams and how good he was the last two years, that was the talking point around this USC offense. Dude, this USC run game has been phenomenal the last two years, even going back to last year where that offense largely, I think, underperformed to a lot of what a lot of people thought it might look like. They were running the ball for five yards per carry. That was top 25 in the country. This run game was really good, and I feel like they didn't stick to it enough because you had a guy like Caleb Williams and you were trying to have him impact the game. In 2024, I think you might see a little bit more balance which probably excites you the most. Now, Dale, I want to look at the tackle position first heading into 2024. And you talk about a bright spot. Like this is what I think this unit can be phenomenal in an era of college football where so many programs are looking for starting caliber tackles in the portal and they don't have a great tackle duo heading into next season. I think USC is just fine. I mean, Elijah Page, a left tackle. What you saw against a very good Louisville defense in terms of being 6'7", 315 plus pounds, the feet that he had. I mean, he looks phenomenal as a true freshman. I think he's going to be a stalwart left tackle for the next couple of years for USC. Then you kick Jonah to right tackle, who's been phenomenal pretty much everywhere he's played for USC the last couple of years, played right tackle in 2022. I mean, you talk about teams looking for starting caliber tackles. USC's got two studs heading into 2024. Yeah, and however you work that out, whatever position they play, I think they should both be fine either way. So whatever happens, happens. But that, that's that's the big thing you're looking at is I think last year you just didn't have a right tackle who you could trust. No. They were filtering guys in and out of that position, and it never really got solved. Again, Elijah Page kind of came in that bowl game and, and and put his stamp on it and said, like, this is my spot. I'm 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 playing one of these tackle spots, and obviously Monheim, as you mentioned, really good too. I mean – I think it'd be interesting to see him and Pregnant, that is, Page and Pregnant, I should say, on one side because those Road two. Grading. Yeah, and you talk about running to that left side, which they love to do in 2023. I mean, you are going to have a lot of success leaning on opposing defensive lines with Elijah Page and Emmanuel Pregnant, who we'll talk about in a second. I just want to give Jonah a shout out. Having him back, and we had this conversation about getting your best five on the football field at the same time. Having a guy like Jonah, who's pretty much played every single position on the offensive line outside of center, coming back is huge, right? When you have the versatility to say, all right, our best five might have Jonah at guard. Okay, that's okay, because he's a stud there as well. Having a guy that has the position versatility that he does, you talk about putting together your best five, certainly going to help USC. But I like Elijah Page and Jonah at your tackle spots, because that is a really, really good set of buck end tackles. Now, moving to the inside, I want to talk about Emmanuel Pregnant first because watching back the film and looking back at some numbers, this is a guy that you see him play at an all-conference level, but then you saw some games that weren't as consistent, and you take a look at him going into year two at the Power 5 level, right? Making that jump from the Group of 5 to the Power 5, especially with how good some of the defensive fronts were in the Pac-12 this year. I mean, you saw some growing pains, but you also saw some ability for him to be really, really good. If he kind of puts it all together and stays consistent in 2024, I mean, you're talking about an all-conference guard, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm i kind of with you. I thought he played really well. I thought that left side, again, that was their unit, and a lot of it was him being able to move guys off the football really consistently. Again, you kind of mentioned, like, there were some things that certainly you clean up. It, it did feel like... I mean, not whiffing blocks, but like letting guys shed them, being like leaning a little bit. Getting over it. skis a little bit, falling a little forward. Yeah, 100%. Like to fire off and get on, guys. So for sure, it's going to happen. But again, obviously still a fairly young player, getting you set power five level. But I don't think he's got any issue. He's physically good enough. And if they just do a good job with him, I mean, that's an NFL guard for sure. And you talk about the other guard spot. I think you, it's like a good problem to have in my mind. You're going to have a, a what I think is a heated competition between Mason Murphy, who – played solid i think there's some more meat left on the bone for him and then the guy that i think is going to be starting is alani noah and this is a guy that there was a reason alani noah trotted out as the true freshman starter at guard against san jose state like lincoln riley and the staff really like alani noah was he quite ready as a true freshman no probably not but i think in year two i think you're going to see a guy that's ready and could potentially fill a massive void of that right guard spot that was a problem for usc now the last position group you got to talk about is the center spot. And another position that I think just was a little underwhelming. Like we were really excited about what Didich could do. I don't think he was very consistent, right? He got bullied around a little bit 
at that center spot and pass pro wasn't moving bodies particularly well in the run game. Dylan McCall my shot right now. And this is a guy that USC fans know I'm a huge fan of. We broke him down when he committed to USC. I mean, true freshman Jason Zandamella. Now I get it. True freshman center it is a scary proposition. Jason Zandamella is a top 50 national prospect for a reason. Now he needs to get that body a little bit more right. I think he's coming into USC around 6'3", 285. A freak show of an athlete. I mean, he carries 285 better than you'd ever see. And if he can get up to 300 pounds, 305 pounds, and kind of have that college football body, I don't think you'd be surprised to be talking about Jason Zanamella starting at center as a true freshman for USC in 2024. And honestly, like these guys gain so much weight when they get to college, it feels like. I mean, you get like a Zion Nelson at Miami. I think he came in at like 250, was playing at 310. I mean, they just like, I don't know what they do in these college programs, but they get guys huge. They get them ready to rock and roll. So I don't think you should be worried about that for him. And, and again, if he can play really well, that's huge because you're right. They just didn't have a physical center, and that kind of does. It did feel like it was setting the tone. I mean, when you can't hold yourself up and you want to pull guys around, it's like people running into Dietrich because he's two yards in the backfield. Like They need a position there. If they're going to run what they were doing last year, they need a guy who can be a bit more of a stalwart and not get moved off the line. And, and if that's Andamella, like all the better, because who doesn't like seeing freshmen play? It, it'll be a big year for Benny Wiley, the strength and conditioning coach. And we don't do a ton of talking about strength and conditioning. Benny Wiley, when he came over, I mean, Lincoln Riley brought him over from Oklahoma for a reason. I don't think this was the most physical team that you saw. And, and I think Lincoln Riley, even at times in the presser, said, yeah, we're, there's going to be some changes to how we're doing things in the weight room. This will be a big year, and specifically Jason Zandamella would be a massive, massive kind of project for Benny Wiley and the strength staff to get physically right because you know he can play at that level, just needs to get that body physically ready. My overall takes, I mean, kind of putting a bow on this, is I think that you're losing some guys that just quite frankly, and I, I don't try to drag guys too much, weren't that good. Right, Michael Tarkin, he just we thought he would be really good coming over from Florida. I think he still can be a good player, but he just didn't put it together at USC. Didich just underperformed at that center spot. And Kingston underperformed as a guy that we thought would be, I mean, he could have gone to the NFL last year and came into USC and you didn't really see that progression. And so you're losing three guys that probably were some, now I wouldn't say liabilities, but weren't your best players and you're replacing them with guys that you're really excited about. Elijah Page, Alani Noah, potentially Jason Zandamella. So for USC heading into 2024, heading into that Big Ten, I think you could see an improvement of this offensive line. But going back to what you said, a little bit more simplified offense in terms of, hey, we're not going to ask you guys to do too much. We're not going to do too much scheming. I think will really help this USC program. Excited about this group. Even more excited to break down this USC defensive line next Monday. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And we'll talk to you all later. Peace.